Hey guys, today I thought I would share with you just a couple of basics on ball python genetics, how it works. Uh, I showed you my last video some of my clowns. Actually, they are het for clown or heterozygous for clown, carrying the clown gene but not showing the trait. And I thought I'd just show you how it works and in future videos I'll do a little bit more advanced uh, and that's where it gets really, really interesting in some of these ball, ball python genetic combinations. Um, so stick with me, let's get into this. All right, everybody, I'm at my computer and as you can see, I've got Excel opened up here. Now, I want to first show you the difference between what a normal ball python is with no genetic enhancers to its, I guess you could say paint job, and a clown. In my last video, I showed you a whole bunch of heterozygous clowns that I had purchased. And just so you can get an idea of the difference between the two. Now, normals are a dominant trait in ball pythons, and clown is a recessive trait in ball pythons. So let's just take a look here. This is a normal. You can see it's, it's actually very pretty by itself. Very dark, very brown, something that would uh, be very successful in nature as they are in Africa. Now, here is what a clown looks like. You can see it's a highly reduced, uh, I guess you could say it's highly reduced pattern. Let me just move my face out of the way here. There we go. All right, so you've got um, the big bolt stripe down the back. You've got the alien heads, which have kind of joined together. And you have these, the reason why it's called a clown is because you have these things coming up the side. And a lot of clowns, they look like uh, teardrops. But this is what a clown ball python looks like. And it is recessive. So that means that both the X and the Y, or you need the clown gene from the mom and the dad in order to make a visual clown. Now, if you only have one gene of the clown in your ball pythons, you will not see a visual clown. Why? Because the dominant gene on the other chromosome, the one that matches the, the, the original chromosome, is a normal chromosome and it dominates the clown. Now this might not be new information to you if, if you've ever taken a bio, biology class, but I'm gonna be pretend like you don't know what I'm talking about. So, how can you go about making a clown ball python if you have a clown and you have a completely normal ball python? What can you do? I'm gonna show you how to do it. So I've got my Excel spreadsheet open and you can make these squares to determine the outcomes of breedings between a mom and a dad. And what we're going to do is we're going to represent the genetics of the snake by capital or lowercase letters, okay? Now, if you put a capital letter, such as I have just typed in here, that means it's a do dominant trait or an incomplete dominant trait. For our purposes, we're just going to be using dominance here. And, so we're going to be crossing a clown visual to a normal ball python. So you put the parents of one of the, the animals. I believe you usually put the female at the top. To be honest, I don't remember. For our cases, it doesn't matter. They're inter interchangeable. So we're going to represent the clown gene as a lowercase c. Now, when talking about genetics, it's important to understand a couple of different things. Here, I've got the next sheet, and we're gonna show you that if you cross a recessive clown ball python 
to a dominant normal ball python. Let's type in the numbers and see what we get. This is how you do it. You type in one parent and then the next parent. You cross the big N with the little c, and that's the product that you get. Big N right here, little c right here. Let's do it over here. Big N, little c, big N, little c. Now these are all the different options of offspring that you can get. And since there are four options that are all the same, you will have 100% of your babies will be homozygous for the normal trait, meaning only one copy of the normal trait, and they'll be, excuse me, <laughs> they'll be heterozygous. Homo is the same, hetero is, is different, okay. Heterozygous for the normal trait, and they'll be heterozygous for the clown, for the clown ball python. 100% of the babies will be this pairing. And when it comes to reptiles, we call that het. The ball python is het for the clown gene. It's not showing the clown gene, but it's carrying the trait. So this is our first pairing. What if we take those offspring that are 100% heterozygous for the clown trait and we breed them together? What are the results going to be? Well, let's fill in the boxes in our square. So this first box, we're going to have a big N right here and a big N here. The second box, we're going to have a big N and a little c. So we already know that that's a heterozygous clown. This first one is a homozygous normal. The second box is big N, little c, and the last box is where we get our visual clown. This is where we get finally what we were looking to make originally. What an awesome thing. Okay, now let's work out the percentages. So, big N, little c, we have two. Two out of four is 50%. We only have one visual clown, so that's 25%, one out of four, and one out of four will be a completely normal, not carrying the clown gene. So that's pretty cool. What do we do if we take one of those clowns, let's say we only get one clown, we have a clutch of four eggs, four eggs, and we only get one visual clown. What if we take one of those visual clowns and we breed him back to one of the parents that we know is heterozygous for the clown trait. Let's fill it in. Big N, little c, little c, little c. Big N, little c, little c, little c. There are only two options that we can have. We can have the same thing as the parent, which is a heterozygous. We get two out of four, and we get two out of four clowns. 50% of the babies will be clown. Now this is pretty cool stuff. Um, so from, from here, this is probably where we're gonna end the video. If obviously, if you breed two visual clowns together, you're going to get 100% of the baby's clown. And that's the goal. You start with a visual clown and just a complete normal and your goal is to make clowns. So with one, the first generation that you didn't make, the second generation that you did make, the third generation is actually where you can get that recessive trait coming through. Pretty cool stuff. 
and each generation, you basically can increase your odds of creating more and more clowns until you have two clowns together, making 100%. In my next video, uh, I'm going to show, show you how to breed in a different kind of gene. It's called incomplete dominant. And this is a pretty cool type of gene um, that in ball pythons, there's a ton of them. And in ball pythons, there are 150 different genes that you could potentially have in one ball python to create some sort of uh, paint job for your snake. And this is where uh, it, it's so much fun and it's really interesting. So I hope that you'll stay tuned for the next video on how we cover a little bit more advanced uh, aspect of genetics in ball pythons. I am not a genetic expert by any means. Go watch uh, the geneticists and all of their explanations on how things work um, with genetics. For me, this is all about how to make pretty ball pythons, all right? <laughs> so uh, I have hope that uh, it's been helpful. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, this has been Steve from Clutch Pythons. Thanks for hanging out, guys.